Good evening and welcome. We uh, will get rolling here so that we can get you, get you on your way tonight. So uh, we've planned about an hour, and I think uh, through the different, it's not just going to be me, it'll be mainly me tonight, but as we uh, work through the presentation, we'll try to hold some time, maybe about 10 minutes at the end for Q&A, uh, and we'll take you know, questions uh, at that point and work through that. So, But uh, if we could, we'll start in prayer, and we've asked... Uh, Father Tim, to get us started with that. Thank you and welcome tonight. Um, you might be aware that today begins the week or octave of Christian unity. So I thought I'd offer a prayer for Christian unity and end with kind of a little piece on our Loyola community. So let us begin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We humbly ask you, Lord, lover of the human family, to pour out more fully upon us the grace of your spirit and grant that, walking worthily in the vocation to which you have called us, we may bear witness to the truth before others and seek with confidence the unity of all believers and the bond of peace. In particular, bless our efforts to fulfill the mission of Loyola Catholic School with fervor and integrity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Well, welcome, and thank you for making it up the hill. Uh, the weather is cooperating at least, so we have a not too slippery of a hill to, to make it up, and it's a, a little easier to make it in from the parking lot as the temperature is warmed up. Uh, Principal Bemmels was just talking, Adam was talking about how, to our staff, we had a staff meeting today on how there's the pluses and minuses of a, of a changing, uh, and, and the changing weather and the beautiful weather. It's so nice that the kids can go out, and now they're going to be very wet uh, every time they go out for, uh, for, for recess, so... Uh, thank you for making it through what's now going to be a wet week. Um, thank you for being here. And I know it takes, takes uh, effort to plan your schedule around it and to be here. Uh, they often say the opposite of uh, love is not hate, it's indifferent. Uh, I know that people who come to a state of the school, uh, that doesn't sound like always the, the biggest exciting uh, night out. Um, but to come to the state of the school, we know uh, your love uh, for Loyola. So we'll hopefully give you some information tonight. Uh, again, at the end, if, if there are questions, we'll at least try to answer some of those, and, uh, but that helps us also understand where the questions are and we can get better at our marketing behind that. But what I will do is start us uh, with a video, and uh, pardon my uh, technology piece here. We're going to just drop this in in a different way. But uh, this is a video that we've shared um, out at, uh, uh, on the web, uh, on the internet, it was also for Wired to the Heart. So many of you have maybe seen this before. And so we'll just start with this. It's definitely a big family here. Everyone knows each other. When we walked in the door, my daughter felt like she was at home. It really is a family and it gives you a place to belong. I think love is the paramount value here at Loyola and our love for one another and our love for humanity. There's a community and there's a family here. It's not just teachers and classrooms. Loyola is really an extension of what we try to bring in our family values. The moral compass that our kids leave here with is going to serve them more than any kind of academics ever will. I think that Loyola teaches our kids to include everybody. That you may all be different, but it's okay to, to all play together. There's not really any kids that get left behind. Everyone knows each other. We sent our children to Loyola because we toured the facility and fell in love. The lockers were open for the high schoolers. They weren't worried that somebody was taking their stuff. All of the teachers stopped what they were doing in their classrooms to talk to our kids, and it really felt like a family. And from the moment I walked into that room, it just gave me just this feeling of 
this is where I want her to be. This feels safe to me. Loyola has really done a great job of preparing our kids to be servant leaders because all the way back in preschool, they engaged the students in service activities. I can remember the sister's house next door singing Christmas carols, and as they get older, the opportunities to give back become more significant. Our kids will see somebody from the high school that they know, and the high schooler knows their name and stops and talks to them and takes time to invest in our kid's life. Down and around, put a hat on top. All right. On the teachers next. here are amazing. They all care about our kids. They all want to do what's best for our kids. The individual attention that I don't think I could have gotten at a different school. They make it more personal and really get to know you and help you and figure out how you learn. I was taught to be a critical thinker. I wasn't just taught material. A lot of the teachers will step in kind of as parental roles and they're very caring. Not only that, but the amount of things I was able to be involved in. Football, musical, I was able to be student council president all at once. You know, she's learned so many prayers and I just think that they've grown so much. They've actually even helped me find my spirituality um, after talking to the kids about what they learned. That he's the son of God, he rose from the dead, he died for us. He was like a really good person, helped lots of people. He's kind of our savior. If we're nice to Jesus, then we're being nice to kids, and if we're being nice to other kids, then we're being nice to Jesus. Just be with Jesus and trust him at all times. We know that Jesus is always with us. And it just feels good. It like makes my heart like warm. Once you go to Loyola, you're forever a Loyolian. I think our relationship with Loyola is pre-K through 12. I think it's a lifetime relationship. And it just felt like home. We're a strong community. They are doing everything they can to be the best and to help your children be their best. So I have proudly served as president uh, since 2015 of that Loyola, and it's been a good year, and it's kind of fun for me to play that video and kind of look out uh, as, as I see the warm smiles and uh, accepting of, of that as our reality uh, that is Loyola. There's aspirations in there of, you know, we are, we are emerging into a new version of ourselves, and, you know, that's, that's been a bumpy road maybe from time to time. It's been a good year. So what is the state of the school? What is the state of Loyola? It's good. Um, it feels good today uh, to be at Loyola. We have uh, been working through a strategic plan, and there's very intentional movements on some of these, uh, but this is the work that was done uh, years ago, and I just kind of draw your attention to the left column of the key objectives of the strategic plan. And what the efforts and a lot of the changes that, for those that have been directly involved with Loyola over the last several years that you've seen is, is striving towards academic excellence. So how are we, as they would say in Milwaukee, more better each year uh, at how we deliver curriculum, how we help our learners learn? And we're setting goals on that. Uh, we have goals. We have strategies behind that. Catholic identity, one of those pieces that emerged in that conversation uh, really across the greater Mankato community about Loyola was what is that identity of Loyola when it comes to its spiritual and Catholic identity? You've heard us talk about our welcoming Catholicism. As a Catholic school with Pope Francis as our leader, uh, there's never been a time, an era, in a long time if ever, where there's been more talk of ecumenicism and welcoming. So how are we, as, as that, uh, that delivery of Catholicism, a welcoming Catholicism, uh, we have uh, nearly 30% nearly of our students uh, are not Catholic. So how do we continue to be a welcoming 
uh, Christianity. And, and in that, it, it also is reaching out to the, the churches. So what, is, what are those connection points and how are we more intentional about connecting the life of our four corporate parishes as well as all saints and all of our parishes and how do we reach out to that as well as some conversations that go on over these last couple of years to our non-Catholic uh, congregations in the area as well. So how are we more intentional about the connectedness of that? Exceptional staff... So the biggest differentiator of a child's education is not going to be, you know, uh, uh, the, the desk, uh, the classroom they're in, uh, the smart board. It's going to be the teacher in that classroom. So how do we continue to give the resources to our teachers? Uh, how do we continue to recruit when we have those openings? How, do, how are we effectively recruiting uh, new teachers into the, into the spots we need it, new staff into the, the support areas that we need it? Great facilities, so we do know that we can't let the facilities slide behind. We know District 77 is being very aggressive uh, with their capital and with some of those new buildings, so uh, we've been intentional about trying to at least keep some pace on that and do some planning for the future with our facilities. And lastly, financial stability. And that's been, it's been bumpy, we're fine, uh, but we've got to continue to look through that and talk about how do we increase How do we increase philanthropy? How do we increase donations to the school? How are we donation-worthy as an organization? And how do we not have to depend on tuition hikes to balance that? How do we... We know that there's a pressure situation that our largest supporter are the four corporate parishes, the five parishes in this area that are supporting us, and and they're having a little less attendance on Sundays, and, and the basket isn't quite as full. So as there's tensions with that... How do we work through strategies uh, for the long term on that? And we've been making changes to help with that. So that is our strategic plan that's a couple years old. I, you know, there's talk about getting more strategic here in the, in the months to come and kind of taking that and giving that an update. Uh, so, but that is the plan that we've been operating under as our, as our backboard. We were excited to share this information. So this is that, uh, the bubble chart. Uh, we shared it out there on social media. We've run it in a couple ads. But you know, what it's showing is what, what I think people should expect at Loyola uh, with, your, with your children here. And that is, it's about proficiency. And so when we take NWEA testing is what we do here, and we compare it to the state testing and bring that in and, and line those up together, what that's describing is you know, what percentile what percentile of our students are proficient in reading and what percentile of our uh, students are proficient in math. And so you see with those area public schools, which is public information, and we gather that, uh, where Loyola ranks out on that. Now, we didn't... A lot of people, when we show this chart, they want to know, like, who is that and who is that? Um, the, we're not going to start listing off all those. It's, it's built by the two codes to that are the, the size of the enrollment is the size of the bubble. And then down here is also uh, the free and reduced lunch. So those are the two pieces you have to that. So that is still available at Facebook if, if you want to spend a night or two trying to decipher which school district it is. The key part is that you shouldn't expect anything different than that, but we do, when it comes to these proficiencies, uh, exceed all of our competition in the area. We've been focusing in kind of three different areas. Uh, This year we've been having conversations. We've been having conversations internally somewhat about it with our leadership team about it, but also out with benefactors and and people that might be potentially stepping up to support the school. And these are kind of the three general buckets that we've been talking to them about. The first one is faculty excellence. So you can see that strategically we have that faculty excellence as a key part. But the things that we're doing specifically around that First of all has been the expansion of our professional development. So our in-house programs, uh, you've seen that over the last couple of years if you've been with us for a couple of years with the late starts. Um, you know, we had, our teachers were here hard at work uh, Monday afternoon. So the students weren't here, but they were working on, in professional learning communities and PLCs and doing that work. Uh, the days that they're putting into uh, professional development before the school year starts and after the school year ends, uh, we've really stepped that up. Uh, the, the diocese of Winona is doing more work and trying to get some funding behind uh, the availability of master's track for our teachers. So how do we help get our teachers that are interested in, in getting their master's degree and going down that path uh, at a greater level 
we're going to need to support that as Loyola as well, but both of those pieces to expand our, our professional development. Uh, the second piece is strengthening our ability uh, for talent acquisition and retention. So really working uh, with our salary structure, with our benefit structure to be competitive in this marketplace. Certainly looking at District uh, 77 and the others, we've put a, a bogey out there, a, a target to, to try to get past 80%, and we've got a ways to go on that, to try to get past 80% of the salary structure at the public schools, just to be fair and just to our own uh, teaching staff, but also when we have those openings to be able to be competitive to bring in the good talent. Um, and also just looking at our benefits pieces and saying how do those compare. So not just looking at the salary alone, but both of those pieces. And lastly, just working to develop in the early stages and discussions if there's a benefactor that would help us with some teachers of distinction, some of our own teachers that are just, you know, breaking out in our, in our difference makers uh, that can really help our brand as Loyola in that aspect and really help the students. Uh, how do we have the resources to go after some really strong teachers out there and have teachers of distinction, a level of distinction with our teaching staff here. And the third area is just around, or sorry, the second area is around family support. So uh, we, we are a Catholic school at heart. There is a, a long historic mission of Catholic schools to make sure that the education is available to all. So we've really been working on that top bullet to drive towards Filling the demonstrated need of our families, those with fiscal demonstrated need, trying to stand in 90% of that. And just to give you a feel, we've been at about the 50 to 60 mark lately. That's about what we can do. So the, the demonstrated need process here, SmartAid, if you've had kids or you remember going through college and doing the FAFSA, very similar to that. And so we've been trying to amp that up, trying to step in more of that to make sure that, you know, the buzz that gets into the community, oh, Loyola is becoming an elitist school. That is not who we are, and we need to have the structures and funding in place to be able to ensure that that doesn't happen. And lastly, just a strong learning environment. And so, you know, the two bullets we add there, uh, the first part is, you know, you saw some of the work here this summer that we did uh, on the upper campus with the upper level. And so uh, Sister Mary Beth uh, had a group, and I keep asking, what group was it? 40th year alumni of Good Counsel Academy. So as this used to be the girls' school of Good Counsel Academy. So the 40-year reunion, they came back and they came, you know, they're doing most of their, their reunion over uh, across the hill. And then they come into the doors right here and they see, they see the beautiful chapel. They see Solar Commons here and go, oh my gosh, this is amazing what you've done with the school. And they, they kind of keep walking down the hallway here and they went upstairs and they said, oh my gosh, this hasn't changed a bit. So... Um, a lot of that is what was needed there uh, on, the, on that upper level uh, to bring the upper level to match uh, the, the lower level and just kind of, as we said, keep up with the Joneses a little bit of District 77. You know, the second piece is getting to this unified campus. And so we're always in the early stages of talking. If, if we were blessed with a 4 or $5 million or it said $3 million gift that just showed up in the door uh, tomorrow and they said they wanted to see a unified campus, right? And you can use it to balance all your other budget, make sure you're still recruiting students and offering tuition assistance. But we had a big chunk of money. You know, the, the current idea, we've got a facilities committee of the board, it has been, we've done some walking through the residence hall right next door, like right through this window here. So the residence hall, uh, the old residence hall now called the academic Education Center is what it's called, and it's got some tenants. It has, you know, residency here. It's got a Z shape, so it goes that way, and then it's got the residence that way. So some of those have been turned over. The upper levels are still just old dorm rooms. Um, but the thought has been this wing right here might, might, might be something if demoed that you can convert that, a couple of those floors, into the classroom space that would be needed to bring the students from the lower campus up here. So it's, it's a dream, or we're trying to think of a feasible reality to bring us to one campus. Um, you would take care of classroom space, but you'd still be pinched on, on uh, gym space. So right now, we're already pinched having enough activity in gym space for our preschool, our early childhood, and elementary and high school in this one little gym in here. So 
you'd also have to, if you brought everybody up, you'd have to tip up a gym with three or four stations uh, to be able to, to have some activity uh, there and, and be able to, to take care of that. It would pinch our food service. That would be pretty tight to get everyone through food service, but you could handle that. And you'd still have to keep the competition gym at the lower campus. You'd still have to keep the theater at the lower campus. Just early thinking, but trying to say, man, could you do that this fall? It would be near a miracle to do it this fall, but we have to start working on all facets of the school and start to say, what would it take? And would there be benefactors? And is our, our finances strong enough and whole enough to be able to do that? to bring that together by the fall of 18. So those discussions are going on, and that's some of the conversations that we've been having. We, uh, you know, one of the biggest changes we had from last year to this year was the restructure of our administration. Uh, that led to some new faces being here. Uh, so, you know, we kind of walked through our org chart. Uh, you know, we are a Catholic school. The diocese uh, has canonical uh, uh, leadership of the school through the trustees. Uh, so we have our trustees, our board of directors uh, that oversees me as president uh, and has that. And then, you know, any business, any organization generally has three different operational areas. You know, you have your service, your core product, you have sales and marketing, and then you have your finance and operations. And so how we are organized today uh, is our chief academic officer is uh, Adam Bemmels. So he is our principal. And he has working directly with him on his academic team. Uh, he's got Miss Deegan, Christy Deegan, uh, our dean of academics, Steve Dornbach, our dean of students. And then John Langkammer uh, has been serving as our activities director for several years. And now we've added assistant dean of students to that role as well. And so they, they work our academic side of that. This is our leadership team. And then Sister Mary Beth, uh, she is serving now as our uh, mission uh, integration associate. So she is working on a lot of that Catholic identity piece, helping support our liturgies, uh, helping bring the charisms of the, of the Jesuits, uh, the charisms of the school sisters, and bring that all together. And then she is, uh, has that experience and has that historical knowledge that's helping uh, working directly with the academic team as well with teacher reviews and academic uh, development and all of those pieces. So, you know, we have an advancement team, uh, people that have been added to that. I currently also serve the role then uh, as Vice President of Finance and Administration and the VP of Advancement uh, as one of my hats. And we have Clifton Larson Allen that we depend on largely for our finance uh, support and, and work. So we brought them in their outsourcing group. So that is our leadership team. So we've got Michelle Zender Fisher here to just say a couple words because uh, the Board of Trustees has been doing some work. And if you could say a few words about that. So. Thank you. As Casey said, I'm Michelle Zender Fisher. For those that don't know me, I'm a parent of a sixth grader and an eighth grader. And I am the current um, vice chair of the trustees. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about the work that the trustees have been focusing on probably for the last six months. And that focus really is on what our bylaws um, look like, which stru structure our governance and help guide us in, make in our decision making. The current bylaws were last touched in 2009 and before that were 2002. So we are looking at our friends at Cotter and Lords um, for what their structure is to try to um, incorporate that into how we've been operating and how we want to operate in the future. Um, the bylaw discussion will lead to conversation about the makeup and structure of our trustees, the number of trustees and how that will be structured, which will also lead then into conversation about um, our committees, our makeup of our committees um, and our subcommittees. So what I would extend to each of you is that if you have an interest in helping serve in any capacity, um, I would encourage you to reach out and say, I'm interested in academics, I'm interested in um, the facilities, and um, look at service on a committee or a subcommittee or a task force that we tend to create to address the issues as, as come up so that we get broad input to bring to make the decisions um, at the trustee level. Uh, so that is what our trustees are currently working on. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. And there's been long meetings and a lot of work uh, that they've been doing. There's been a, a subgroup working directly on those bylaws, so they've had uh, 
sorry, Blank, uh, diocese. Marcia Stenzel from the diocese has been helping along with uh, Shelley as well, working through those bylaws and those conversations. Oh, I didn't mean to go by that fast, sorry. Uh, so what we have here is a lot of times people are here and wondering about the, the tuition rates. So what I'm sharing up here, uh, and, and we'll try to walk you through that, is our tuition plan for this coming year. And, and I, we try to get it on one slide. Uh, as the Board of Trustees has worked through uh, the decision and the philosophies and the concepts behind the Board of Trustees, or behind the tuition, there's been a lot of conversation about how to format and communicate this. Uh, so uh, this is our, our attempt today to try to walk you through what tuition is going to look like uh, for next school year. So let's start at the top. This, what you're looking at, two th key things. Uh, this is what it looks like for advanced registration and for the families that receive a parish grant. We have another slide for those that don't receive the parish grant. So this is advanced registration uh, Advanced registration, what does that mean? That means that you are fully registered in Education Edge and in Smart Tuition before April 1st. So, if you're going to pay, if you're going to get registered, if you're going to register, go through updating your data in, in, in Ed Edge, uh, updating your information in Smart Tuition, clicking the contract, if you're going to do that after April 1st, those aren't your numbers. Okay? So these are the numbers. Uh, if that happens before April 1st, and uh, if you've received a parish grant. So we'll talk a little bit more about the parish grant in a second too, but those are the caveats behind what you're looking at there. So tuition for the secondary level, grade 9 through 12 next year, will be 6450 intermediate 5175 five-day, all-day preschool, kindergarten, and through grade four, so our elementary level, uh, tuition is at 3,975. So I put those in really small print. This PowerPoint and a video that uh, Jordan's doing there is going to be on the website, but that's not to be tricky. It's just not to call it out. What does that mean? It says that tuition, if you advance registered last year before April 1st and received a parish grant, and did all that last year, secondary tuition number there is actually down $25 uh, from last year. And intermediate's down 75 and pre-K and elementary is down 125 if you play our game. And our game, and why we're asking and why this has been a structure and a movement to having you register in March and by the end of March is so we can organize our classes so we can organize our offerings and we can or organize our staff. And so that's why we have put incentive behind it. So the mechanism behind that, last year if you did this advanced registration, if you remember, you got a $25 tuition credit. This year when you do that advanced registration, what that means is you're getting a $200 per student tuition credit. So down below what that's saying, after April 1st, after April 1st, the tuition rates that you see here go up $200 for the pre-K through grade 12, and they go up $50 for the preschool levels. And again, the parish grant level is $800 uh, for the pre-K through 12 tuition, and again, that's already included in here. So this is after you deduct that parish grant, after you get that credit for it. It's $400 for uh, the five-day preschool, and it's $200 for the, for the uh, preschool two- and three-day. And so... That last part there we'll go into in a second. Uh, we'll have Father John come up and talk about it, and that's our parish grant form, our return to parish. So just quickly, and I can bounce back and forth between them. So this is the advanced registration tuition for those, for those that are not in one of the five uh, parishes. But it's also, and Sister Mary Beth was suggesting we talk about this, it's also for people, if you don't go and try if you're not in one of those five parishes, to ask your pastor or priest if they could help. So um, please go and ask. There are many parishes, there are congregations out there that will help you, but this is what it is if you don't have that credit. So it's 800, as we said before, uh, different in the K 
pre-K through 12, and then a little less different in the, the lower grades. I go back to it. Those are those numbers. So we, we uh, the first payments again, just like we did this year, those first payments for those on the 10-month payment plan uh, will be starting uh, in May. So those are 10 payments of, you know, just move the decimal one, $645 for, for high school tuition for advanced registration and those with the parish grant. And that's what it looks like for the those not in the parish grant piece. I lose everybody, lose somebody, kind of get it? So I hope what you see there philosophically, the, the work of the finance committee, the work of the board of trustees, the conversations we've had with folks over the years as we're trying to help. The actual price tag, the actual price tag of tuition went up 1.7%, uh, I think, right? But we're adding discounts and adding ways to help kind of bring that burden down. Father John. Oh, there you are. So I'll let you talk about the forum here. There you go. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Good to see you. Um, we, five priests that are associated here, five pastors, uh, Really, we are involved in lots of meetings, of course, the boards and other committees, but uh, I sense in us really the joy is when we can come and interact with the kids, which we have mass uh, every week. I had it this morning with the elementary and high school together. And I was uh, saying, uh, talking to them about uh, what happens when we make mistakes, and I said, uh, how many of you kids have uh, ever had time out? And I was amazed. I think 90% probably raised their hand. <laughs> so not everybody and, and the big kids in the back, I saw even some of the big kids raise their hands. So. <laughs> and the kind of cute one was this little boy. He said, well, I got it because I shot a Nerf gun at my sister. So they were kind of cute this morning. But those moments really uh, remind us of uh, why this school is important to us and important to, to each parish. Now, this school was uh, founded as a parish school, so uh, it was originally we had our own grade schools, but of course nowadays it's really the four or five parishes that together have formed this school system. And the connection is sometimes, uh, I believe, getting lost. And I've noticed it a bit, uh, the connection between the parish and the school. I've noticed some of my people saying things like, um, why are we sending all that money up to them? I said, them? You know, that's us. That's our school. That's our people. And it's a, a slight difference, but I think it's, Really, what has happened in people's mind, they kind of forget that this is our parish school. And uh, so uh, I think we as pastors have talked about how do we, you know, continue to build that connection so that uh, people know that the school is here and that uh, it's ours. But I do find, I mean, overall, I would say in my parish that there is a very strong commitment to Loyola. We have a lot of alumni, of course, parents, and others who really just believe in Catholic education. And so uh, we felt as pastors how to one way that we could possibly bring this before the parents and also make us as a parish more aware, is that we would ask you to ask for the parish grant. It's always been just automatic that we give each of you a parish grant. And uh, it's maybe a, a simple thing, but the fact that uh, you fill out a form and say, I'm a member of your parish, so we will be sending a sheet to each of our parishioners in Loyola and asking, uh, and asking you to fill out this form so that... Uh, or you may want to say, well, I don't really need the grant, and so 
throw it away. I guess that's your option too. But uh, if you want the grant, uh, we would ask you to fill out the form. And it somehow makes you aware that it's a gift from the parish. And I think we as parishioners, our par parish knows that uh, you appreciate the gift. So that's uh, the simple form that's here. So when you receive it in the mail from us parishes, you will understand. Questions or? Okay, thank you. So those, I think, will be coming out in a couple of weeks is what it sounds like, and then just get them back to the parishes. As soon as the parishes get it, they let us know, and, and then you'll, your tuition will be credited for that. So, so uh, just other pieces around financing of education. So there's a couple of things new this year. Uh, we are bringing in a multi-child discount. So we're adding a multi-child discount to, to everybody. I'll walk you through a little bit of the details on what you need to do to the hoops you got to run through for that. Um, and then, as I talked about in an earlier slide about the philosophical kind of movement to trying to support more of the demonstrated need for families in need, um, we've been, as I said, kind of in that 50 to 60 percent move. We will move this year to more of a 75 to 80 percent uh, of filling that need. So kind of trying to close that gap and help out a little bit more so that our families uh, that have those demonstrated need uh, will be able to try to support more of that. So that process, uh, again, um, I put it, pulled it out there and put it here. It's Smart Aid for Parents. So uh, that's important for everyone to look at. Smart Aid for Parents. Smart Aid for Parents, it's the same company as Smart Tuition, but uh, it is a $45 per family charge to do that. We've worked that down to that. So it does cost you $45 to apply for smart tuition. The school doesn't gain revenue or anything from that. That's what they charge us to get into smart, uh, smart aid, to, for smart aid for tuition assistance. That allows us to look at those pieces. Every family that has more than one child in the system that goes through that smart aid process will get that family discount. So the family discount is if you have two kiddos in the system, it's $100 off both of those tuitions. If you have three, $150 off all three of those tuitions. Four, $200 off each of those tuitions. Five, besides some additional prayer for patients, uh, you also get $250 uh, off that tuition. So those are uh, that's a new piece to it. The smart aid process is open right now. Any families uh, that go through that process, go ahead tonight and start working through that. Uh, that process is up. Uh, a difference is, this is the screen you see. Last year, everybody had to go to the left screen, which said new. Uh, this year, you can go to the right and try to search out. If you remember your password and everything from when you did it last year, you'll be able to go in there. And they've rolled some of that information, and it's a little quicker for you this year to go through that a second time. Other ways. So we had, just going to say it's a change in being transparent about it, we had that if you prepaid your tuition in full or made that first tu tuition payment by the end of May, uh, whichever you chose to do, there was a 5% discount. And so in moving and increasing that advanced registration from 25 to 500, we've made this a flat amount, which is less, it's less, but for every student, it's $150 per student that you will get a credit if you do that prepay option. So we still have that available uh, out there. It's a flat fee. It's a little less. If you prepay your tuition or you select the one tuition payment in May on your smart tuition, uh, it's a $150 credit. Um, seeds of faith. This goes back to kind of the financial need piece. Uh, the Prince, uh, Adam and the... And and Christy, you were there too. We were at a, a session with the diocese, um, and they started to share the seeds of faith information um, with which schools had received how many seeds of faith scholarships. Seeds of faith is, a found, is in the foundation of Winona. The Diocese of Winona Foundation has raised money, and they give scholarships. Uh, they, have a, they have for students of need. They also have Hispanic students of need are their two pieces. And for families of, of notable need, it's a really good scholarship. It doesn't 
cost the school anything. It's, it's money that goes above and beyond anything else here. So uh, you have to have it signed off by a priest, uh, but we've asked them time and time again, you don't need to be Catholic to apply for that. Um, so you can still do that and have a priest sign off on it is what the form says, and they, they are aware of that and move through it. I think they just want you to have a conversation with one of our priests. That's what you have to do is get that signed off. It's, it's not the Spanish Inquisition or anything like that, but they've said that needs to be part of the process. You fill out that form, you submit that, and it's additional money. So we're, we'll have a, a lot more of those forms available here, and I think each of the parishes uh, usually get those sent. Uh, so you can check at the parishes or check in our uh, admissions office or in our finance office for those forms. How many people are using script? Okay. So last year at this, we announced moving to 100% of script uh, credit. So people are using script. Um, anyone from the script committee got a high number of what maybe one family got in one year? Do you know what the highest... I do believe we were into four figures that some families, through their buying habits and everything, of using script and getting those rebates. Do you know? Is that close? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so there's an art, there's a lot of work to do with that, but that is money. As, as that gets credited twice a year, whatever you built up in credit there, goes right to your tuition as a tuition credit. So uh, those are some pieces. And as I stayed on the bottom, and we kind of stated earlier, if you're, if you're, you know, talk to your parish. So, you know, I think St. Joe the Worker has a scholarship, and they're looking for applicants. Uh, the men's club, I think, has one. And, and there's just check with your parishes, check with your congregations, check with service organizations. Uh, if there's other places for scholarship support out there as well, we really encourage it. And again, we said take that parish involvement form to your own uh, pastor and see if they, they might do it. This is our re-enrollment cycle, our kind of timeline. Uh, this Friday's e-news, we're planning to include the link for re-enrollment. So that'll be in there Friday. We'll give some direction on that, but you'll be able to click on that link and go through that re-enrollment process and update your information in EdEdge, information in Smart Tuition, click the contract, have all those things in Make sure that you're in for that uh, advanced registration piece. Uh, February 17th is where we've targeted the first window for the smart aid people, the people that are applying for smart, uh, smart aid for tuition assistance. We, last year we had some hiccups in it. Uh, it was the first year we were in smart aid. Smart aid had a whole bunch of new uh, customers, clients, and they, they weren't ready for it. They're ready this year, but if you get us fully, if you get all of your information fully complete, I'm being redundant with that, in Smart Aid by Friday, February 17th, we should be able to give you your family's aid package information by March 17th so that you'll still have time before that April 1st piece if you're hesitant to go through and click the registration process. If you go through and click the registration process, and you get your smart aid package, it gets credited right onto your account. So you're not losing out if you uh, go through that registration process before it. But if you get us that information by February 17th, a month later, by March 17th, we should be able to give you that, that piece. And again, the reminder, the final day of advanced registration for enrollment is March uh, 31st. Um, so that's different. Uh, Many people made it to our kind of training and our registration re-enrollment nights last year. You don't need to do that. You should be able to do that uh, in your footy pajamas at home and be able to go through that process. We will, for sure, have help desks available at the preschool conferences, uh, at the elementary or upper level and lower, upper campus and lower campus conferences, uh, and we'll communicate that. We'll have some help desks if you want us to help you go through that. And if you catch our finance office, if you call and schedule an appointment with them, they'll help you walk through it. And our enrollment office will help you walk through that as well. So um, that's our re-enrollment timeline. Here is our current... So as, as we share uh, where we're at as a school, uh, the little tiny numbers on the far right says our K-12 through is at 379 students 
And when we include our early childhood preschool and with that, we're at 439 students. That's down, right? That's been down the last two years. I see many faces that, I've, that have joined uh, our conversations with the grade levels. So we've had a grade level kind of meeting with myself and administration have been there. And we've talked through at each grade level to say, you know, how's it going, what's going on, what's working, not working. And listening, trying to, to make sure we're getting stronger and getting the right information to adjust uh, how this school moves going forward. You know, uh, administrators, myself, we've been out, we've been out talking. Uh, Adam was at uh, Rotary today. I was at Sarah last night. Um, you know, we're getting out there. I'm at Kiwanis in a couple weeks, just trying to get out there in the community and talk. We're trying to get more present. Uh, Shelley was over at St. John's uh, Parish uh, with some of their younger classes at a religious ed piece. I think it was First Communion, was it? And just kind of gave out some some packets. As administrators, we can stand up here and talk till we're blue in the face. If you have ever talked to any of us, you know how passionate we are about your kiddos and how passionate we are about Loyola. And it'll make some difference. It might give some confidence to some people out there. Our teachers, when our teachers talk about the school and why, they're, why people's kids should be here to, to somebody considering Loyola, that, that'll make a difference. It'll make a much bigger difference than any of us talking heads as administrators talking. It makes a bigger difference to the parent decision. And if you go back and think about your own decision to join Loyola, I'm, I'm sure you might have had either of those two pieces. But if a current parent, if a current parent is excited about what's going on at Loyola and a current parent is talking to other parents about what's going on at Loyola, sorry, that's, that's far superior to any of us administrators, faculty, or staff. If your kiddos are talking uh, to other kiddos about how excited they are to be at Loyola, well, that's it. I mean, that's, that's how you win the game. You know, I been having these level meetings uh, with the different grade levels and I had that uh, largely because we'd been having pizza with the president so I'd been meeting with each of the, the grade students and um, we were asking them questions you know they've been very clear and, and those that have come have heard that the, the lower campus the eighth graders say we have to have a pool at the lower campus and we have to start trap shooting um, and the fourth graders were, were explicit that we need a water slide up here so um, that's, that's their hope to move. But each of those grades, we had the conversation and kind of said to them, you know, what would it take, you know, if you're at uh, softball or baseball or dance or Boy Scouts or Cub Scouts or Girl Scouts to, to just mention to one of your friends there about coming to the open house, you know, and they're coming and shadow visiting at Loyola. And we found out $25 Target gift card, sorry, $5, $5 Target gift card is all it took. $5 Target gift card or a $5 Subway card is what, what it would take. So I'm good for that. If your kiddo brings somebody, let us know. We'll, we'll pull together a gift card. Our hopes, our, our, our strategic hope is this next year that we fill we fill this early childhood program up and we have three sections of kindergarten next year. And that's not to say with your kiddos in the system and where they are that we're not hoping and, and praying that we're going to bring students in in those other grades. Uh, that's going to be, you're going to be the biggest difference maker in that. You're going to know the kiddos that, that this would be a good fit for and, and helping to, to bring them in. It's four times arbitrary number. If it's four times more difficult for a school to recruit kids in 1 through 12 than it is in that preschool uh, and kindergarten spot. So your, you know, your questions that you have, please come to us administrators and, and get your questions answered. We've, we've worked through some misinformation out there. We, we heard from one parent that they had a colleague uh, that was working with them and in the Catholic school system outside of the greater Mankato area. And eh, I don't know if I'd send my kid to Loyola. You guys have been jacking up tuition there. He says, what? Yeah. It was a, I think it was $35,000 or $45,000 a year for tuition. That's what you guys are charging. It's like, ugh. So there is noise out there. And we can't stop that noise. When you hear the noise, please come and get the information from us, and we'll try to help you on that. Um, 
but we got to get through some of that noise. Uh, we got to let people know this was a really good school year. Next year's going to be more better, as we've said. So uh, the energy is good. Uh, let us know what those questions are uh, so we can give you some answers on that. So those two pointed kind of spots, we'd love you to help encourage people to come to. Already Monday night we have our open house. It's from 5.30 to 7.30, and it's on, all, all here at the upper campus. Um, so if you know of anyone that's interested, let us know. If you know of somebody that's interested and they can't come to that, please uh, let our admissions office know. Let any administrator know. We'll get the name to the, administ- to the admissions office, and we can start to identify those people and bring them out. Our next open house then is March 14th, uh, so that'll be a similar piece. And we're bringing back this year a kindergarten roundup. So on March 10th, there won't be any preschool, any early childhood or kindergarten. And we'll have two sessions there for folks interested to just get a, a feel during the school day with the energy of the school day going on around it. A uh, 9.30 session and a 12.30 session uh, for folks to possibly join. So please help us get the word out. Hopefully you've seen we've been running some TV ads with some of that video clip that you saw earlier, radio ads, newspaper ads, but the best ad is word of mouth. Um, and then also social media. We've been, that little one, one minute ad is, is on our website or on our Facebook site. Please go share away on that. Wow, I can really fill time. Um, so uh, we don't have a hard stop here. Uh, and that does uh, cover, well, I don't see another slide here. That does cover the stuff we were pushing at you. So I'm going to turn to the leadership team. Anything else you want to talk about? Huh? No. Got that. Thank you. Anything else besides this? <laughs> so then we'd open the floor to questions that we can try to field uh, here and then try to record them. And if we can't get you an answer here, we'll track you down and get you an answer. So... Yes. Yes. We haven't, we've got a couple sheets left to put in there, like tuition, which you now know, but we have the information of what goes on at Loyola and stuff, so we have that um, in our office. Yes. So, Friday. Okay. <laughs> Friday. So that question was other professionals. We do have materials. We've got 1,000 packets, 1,000 packets uh, in last week. And so we do have a packet of material to share. So, if, again, if you have families that might be interested, please come and get that and, and deliver those. Great question. Other questions? Yes. Can I grab you a microphone? <laughs> I mean, do I need to call, get you a microphone? I don't know. But <laughs> okay, about script. Um, for people who aren't familiar with it at all, the reason that it went from 50% to the families, 50% to Loyola, to 100% to our families is that it's no longer administered by a paid staff member at Loyola. We are a group of volunteers who completely take care of the script program. So with that, we ask for just a little bit more kindness in the fact that we're not paid staff members, and we're doing it because we want to help the families of Loyola afford tuition better. So for people who don't know about it or families that are asking about the school, that's always a piece that I feel like gets missed and should be mentioned more often, and we as a committee are more than happy to walk people through it and show them how I've offered to have people come to my office whatever works. But that's the big change with script and why it's 100% for people that aren't aware. How's your, how's your staffing? Do you need more bodies? or? Um, we're not bad right now. Okay. It's, it's, I mean, Chris, what do you think? We probably have enough people for now. Yeah. Okay for now, but thank you. 
I'm just going to jump on the bandwagon with respect to script. It's, it is very easy, and I know that some of the original perception was that you had to come up and get the gift cards, but there's a lot of things that you can stand in the checkout line and be on your smartphone and get that script in your wallet before you get to the checkout line, and if you're really smart about it at, for example, Bath & Body Works, you get 20%. So you can save a lot of money. Um, so you go and you shop your sales, and then you get 20% off that. So um, sometimes it might not be so great for shopping, but um, in terms of what you're considering, but it's easy. Thank you. I want to just jump on that and just a clarification, because we did also do some changing last year with, with smart tuition. So your smart tuition account here, if you caught what's gone on, right, if you're doing food service here, we bill in arrears now, so after a month we put that on your smart account. Um, for those traveling for the, for the choir and band tour that's coming up, we don't say bring a check in, we put that on your smart account. So everything is coming through that smart account. So those script credits that hit, just so you know, those aren't just going to tuition if you're somebody that doesn't have any of those other, ex or has those other expenses and takes care of your tuition. Know that, that that's the same dollar it goes into that. So I just wanted to be clear on that. So thank you. Other thoughts or comments on script or anywhere else or any other comments? Questions, thoughts, concerns? Summer program. Summer program. It, was it time for you to ask me again? <laughs> I think every couple of weeks. Uh, probably just in the very early stages. The question is summer program, and would we do clubhouse through the summer? We've been talking. There's a history of that. Um, we're looking at our clubhouse. We're doing some work on clubhouse, by the way. We're aware we've got to tighten that up a little bit. But into the summer, we haven't made a decision. I'm not sure when we're going to make a decision, and we're quite aware that the window of starting something up here might be closing on us fairly quick because families have to make other solutions for summer. But we haven't had it. We're not sure we're going to be able to pull that off for this summer. But there's still a little hope. There's hope. Other questions? Other comments? Other thoughts? So besides the workshops, start handing this microphone down there and giving them a chance to see who's going to answer. So the question was, I think, besides the workshops, and we've been doing that, just other things that you can kind of point to that are doing to increase the academic rigor of Loyola. So. Yep. So we're, we've started monthly meetings with our departments, pre-K through 12. So we'll have a representative from elementary grades, from the intermediate grades, and from the high school. And we're really looking at our curriculum, the what we're teaching. What are the learning objectives we're hitting? How does that grow sequentially? How do we repeat the ones that need that spiraling, that repeating? And how do we make sure that we're hitting everything that we want our students to learn by the time they graduate? And we're doing that for every... Um, every subject area. With that, we're also looking at the subject areas and how do they work together? How do we get out of siloed subject areas? And how do we look at the bigger picture of learning so that it's a more cohesive, um, cohesive and rigorous approach? So looking at what we're teaching, also looking at is it at the right challenging level? Are our students meeting that level? And that comes the assessment. So we're looking at our NWA scores and are they getting proficient? And that, that chart just showed proficiency, but we look at getting our kids proficient and then we want them in the 90th and above percentiles nationwide. So what are we taking with our kids who are proficient and getting them above and beyond proficient? So using that assessment as well. And then our teachers are working in professional learning committees. So that's um, getting together in groups talking about instructional strategies, the how they're teaching, how they're engaging students, how they're ensuring that kids are learning, and then reflecting with each other and providing feedback to each other and talking about what they're seeing as a difference with their students. So it's definitely a work in progress, um, but it's something that I know that our whole administrative team is on board for ensuring that the great work that we're doing here right now in education continues and then also continues to grow and continues to become more rigorous and um, challenging for our students at all of their individual levels. Thank you. Other questions on that? <laughs> Any 
Anything yep. for the high school in terms of ACT prep is what I'm hearing. There. We've started so. that conversation. There are some really great resources in our community. I know of two um, two tutors that have come together with us, and we've started the conversations about how do we get a little source, more systematic in that approach for helping our kids. Um, we do offer, as you said, the ACT preps on those two-hour late starts, but we're starting that conversation on how do we utilize those tutors as well. And also, you know, it'd be ideally, it'd be great if we can just provide the education here where it is so strong that our kids are doing amazing on the ACT. And yet when I met with those tutors, it's still a test, and there are some little tricks that you can do to just bump up that number a little bit. So that's where it's nice to supplement just the instruction on what we're learning and how I can demonstrate it, and then I need to find a tutor. What are these little tricks I can do just to pass this test a little bit better and get a better score on that? So we're starting the conversations, but if you want um, any info on those tutors, you know, we can definitely point you in that direction for those little test-taking skills. Otherwise, I just strongly suggest to have your students come to our two-hour late starts. Thank you. Other questions around academics or ACT or anywhere else in the gamut? Eight oh seven. All right. Well, let me just do that. I'll just close this in a quick prayer, and I'll, uh, if we could, let's, let us remember as... Oh. Huh? No, we talked about that. Thank you. <laughs> um, let us remember as always we're in the holy presence of God and do so in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we are grateful. We are grateful for this mission and ministry that is Loyola Catholic School. Thank you for our faculty. Thank you for our staff and the work that they do to help form these young vessels into the best version of themselves that you have created them to be. Be with our students and our families, keeping them safe and keeping them focused on you as the source. Dearest Lord, teach us to be generous, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the pain, to toil and not to seek for rest, or not to seek rest, to labor and not to expect reward, except that of knowing we do your will, O Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you again for coming, and we'll be around uh, for a little bit longer. We've got some refreshments out there, a little bit of carbohydrates, and uh, leadership team and everybody will be here to continue to answer questions. Thank you. <laughs>